Thank you all for joining us today for the East Mediterranean Business Cultural Alliance, or known as EMCA, uh, the American Bipartis Bipartisan State Legislatures of uh, Hellenic Descent and their effect on the East Mediterranean and beyond panel discussion. Uh, this uh, discussion is in association with the HEPAS Hellenic Cultural Commission. My name is Lou Katzos, EMCA's president and a HEPAS National Hellenic Cultural Commission chairman and I will uh, be moderating today's panel. Our distinguished panel includes Senator, uh, State Senator Lura Takis, Democrat from Rhode Island, State Representative Eleni Kavros de Groa, uh, Democrat from uh, Connecticut, State Hi. Representative Nicole Claridis Ditria, Republican Connecticut, State Senator Spiros Man Manzavinos, uh, Democrat of, uh, from Delaware, uh, State Representative uh, Leon. Savrinakis, a Democrat from South Carolina, and State Senator Stephen Pappas, a Republican from, uh, from uh, Wyoming. Before we start today's panel discussion, I would just like to have a moment of silence uh, for the innocents uh, who died uh, recently and, uh, and, uh, and now actually in uh, Southern Turkey and uh, Northern Syria, a moment of silence. Thank you. The importance of state legislators is at times misunderstood, not only on a grassroots level locally, but also in helping shape and the key to national issues as well as international ones. As such, here at EMCA, we felt it was important and long overdue to have a bipartisan discussion with some of our legislators of Hellenic descent about their main role in designing, drafting, and passing laws on a state level, but also helping shape national as well as international policy in the East Mediterranean and beyond. We hope today's panel discussion and uh, further future discussions explains the very important role of these legislators in America and their importance in, in shaping policies. I'd like to introduce um, uh, for our first uh, panelist, uh, State Senator Ludov Takis. Uh, he is the first Hellenic American state senator to be elected in Rhode Island and has won re-election four times. He has been a staunch supporter of the Hellenic Republic and Cyprus. A longtime member of the World Hellenic Interparliamentary Association, Raptakis has worked on a range of policy issues impacting not only the Hellenic Republic, but many European nations. During his time in, in the Rhode Island legislature, Raptakis won passage of resolutions regarding the Pontian genocide, recognizing the Hellenic roots of Macedonia, a peaceful solution to the Cyprus problem, and safeguarding the ecumenical patriarchate by urging Turkey to respect the rights and religious freedoms of the patriarchate, and also work, worked on reopening the theological school of hockey and where he has been a, a leading supporter also in the Trans-Adriatic uh, project. He continues a dialogue on issues of concern, such as blocking the sale to Turkey of the F-35 aircraft and addressing constant Turkish threats uh, to the Aegean. He was a leader also in the successful Liberty Project, authorizing the donation of the Arthur Huddle, the last remaining lib Liberty ship in private hands to the Hellenic Republic for use as a floating museum in Piraeus. He is recognized as an independent voice, someone who has been outspoken in promoting honest and effective government and is one of the most popular politicians in his state. Both his parents are from the island of Andres. Welcome, uh, welcome Lou, and thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Lou, and great introduction. And I want to also welcome my colleagues in government. Lou, you hit it right on the... Uh, uh, focus right on what we're doing as issues. As you know, there are 43 Hellenic American, Greek American uh, legislators and general officers and members of Congress. Uh, that consists of our group. We have five members of Congress. We just found out uh, two weeks ago that we have three lieutenant governors of Greek descent, of, uh, Greek American descent. We have California, Connecticut, and now we have Nevada. We have a uh, Stavros Anthony's lieutenant governor of Nevada. 
both of his parents are from Cyprus. We have, uh, on top of that, we have 11 state senators and 20 state representatives in, elected in 19 states. And that's the key vote because every state has two U.S. senators that all of us, you'll hear the next uh, hour, are our regional issues and our local issues, how we connect with our two U.S. senators and our number of members of Congress in the states. That's very powerful. Just think. In those 19 states, we have 38 members of the U.S. Senate and over 180 members of Congress out of the 535 helping the five elected Greek Americans in Congress right now. So that that is a huge, I don't want to use the word lobby, but a huge educational tool in educating our colleagues in government about the issues, about the issues of Greece, Cyprus, what's happening today. As we're speaking right now, we have 25 out of 30 uh, legislators sign on to a letter supporting Senator Menendez and clarifying the issue to our colleagues in government, our U.S. senators, especially those that are on the uh, U.S. Senate Foreign Relations Committee and the House Foreign Relations Committee, because those are the two key committees that can block the F-16s from going to Turkey. We won the battle on the F-35s, as you had mentioned earlier. And there's a lot of issues. We're working not only the geopolitical issues, but we have energy issues between our home states and Greece and Cyprus. Of education, bonding our state universities with universities in Greece and Cyprus, Fortune getting Fortune 500 companies and other companies to invest in Greece and having Greek companies invest here in the United States. So it's a bridge building mechanism that we've done as, as Hellenic American legislators and state legislators plays an important role. You remember what Tim O'Neill used to say, all politics is local. So working that from the bottom up I think brings us together and those non-Greek Americans that are elected in our states understand the issues. And I'll give you a, and I'll close uh, real quickly. When we pass these resolutions in our state Senate, every state Senator supports the annual Greek Independence Day resolution, the annual Pontian genocide resolution, and many other of the issues that are values of democracy. And I think that's what the key point is. We emphasize Greece being the cradle of democracy, and it resonates with all our colleagues in government, especially that we're a small minority in the U.S. Congress, five out of 535, three, uh, four, five, four general officers. We have the Secretary of State of Illinois who just got uh, real uh, elected. He was a former treasurer, Alex Yanoulis. So we're, when we bond together, united, it makes us a lot stronger. And thank you very much, Lou, for that kind introduction. Thank you. Thank you, Lou, for that. And uh, one of the things that I, I do want to emphasize is uh, what you mentioned before, that there's common uh, values, you know, Hellenic and American common values. And on purpose, on purpose, we chose uh, the title, okay, of this, of this particular event relating to American bi bipartisan state legislators of Hellenic descent. I don't want anyone to confuse uh, who we are. You know, we're all Americans, obviously, and it's very important as Americans to speak things that are important to Americans. In other words, not only being of Hellenic descent, but but all Americans, uh, you know, the things that you talked about, you know, the values of democracy, you know, the values of freedom, you know, the values of, uh, of uh, rules of law and things of that nature. So one of the things I do want to you know, emphasize as, as we talk today is those common values that are shared. And in particular, how those values are perhaps not shared by some, um, some others, including what is taking place, as we know, in the Ukraine right now uh, with Russia, et cetera, and, and including also what is happening in the East Mediterranean, as you, as you said, with regards to uh, the Hellenic Republic, Cyprus, and, uh, and Turkey. I mean, one of the things that we, we want to emphasize is that we believe in peace, and, and peace can only happen when there's no... Um, dictatorial powers that try to influence uh, themselves on, 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 on other nations. With that, I'd like to introduce State uh, Representative Eleni Kavros uh, de Groa. Uh, she was elected in November 2020 to represent the 17th district in Avon and Canton. She is chair of the Planning and Developing uh, Development Committee and serves as a member of the Public Health Committee and Finance, Revenue and Bonding Committee. Eleni is a graduate of the uh, James uh, Madison University and the Campaign School at Yale. Uh, she is a long-serving community leader, 
campaign consultant, development professional, and writer. While uh, excited to represent a community in a newly elected uh, role, Eleni is no stranger to leadership. She served as an active board member for Hands on Hartford, led initiatives and built teams to raise funds and secure resources for schools, food banks, and child advocacy groups, and recently worked as, as um, the giving team coordinator for FoodShare. As the co-founder of two local grassroots organization in the uh, uh, Farmington Valley and 100 Women Who Can, Eleni has worked tirelessly to educate and inspire residents to support critical issues involving equity, poverty, healthcare, refugees, education, and the environment. Her experience in these leadership positions has given her an inside look of what the most vulnerable communities in Connecticut need. Eleni plans to utilize this knowledge in the house and to help uh, implement necessary changes for the betterment of not only her district, but her state as well. As a re uh, resident of Farmington Valley for more than 20 years, Eleni lives in Avon with her three children and husband who is the founder and CEO of a service disabled veteran owned small business. Welcome Eleni and thank you for being with us today. Uh, she joined us yet. Eleni has not joined us? No, her, remember I said her back went out. I didn't know if she would be able to make it today. Okay, not a problem. Uh, and I, I apologize for that. So Nicole, let me, let me then introduce you. Uh, uh, State Representative Nicole is, uh, Claridis is from, uh, a Republican from Connecticut. Uh, she was the first, uh, she was first elected to serve in the 105th district in, in 2016 and has continued to serve the people of, uh, of Beacon Falls, Seymour and part of Derby with this with distinction since. For the 2023-2024 uh, session, uh, she, has, she was appointed by House Republican leader Vincent Candelora to serve as the ranking member of the legislature's uh, public health committee. She will, she will also serve on the finance, revenue, and bonding committee and the regulation re review committee, where she previously held the title of chair. Representative Kalaidis Ditria will continue to serve in her leadership role as the caucus whip. WIPs are traditionally responsible for helping to shape public policy, assisting Republican lawmakers, and making sure all Republican House members are in attendance to cast their votes on legislative issues. A lifelong uh, resident of, of where now she is, she is a representative. Uh, her grandparents uh, immigrated from uh, Greece in search of the American dream, and that had a tremendous impact on her commitment to community. Following their daily example of hard work, they founded Claridis uh, Supermarkets. She has uh, grown up working in the family supermarkets in the area, and she has learned the same values of hard work and, and putting her community first. In 2011, she was elected to serve on the Seymour Board of Selectmen and was unanimously voted by Democrats and Republicans to become the, the first deputy selectman. Nicole, uh, was re-elected to the Board of Selectmen in 2013 and 15. And she stepped down from being uh, the Deputy First uh, Selectman after winning her election for state representative. She is a graduate of Quinnipiac University and has had a successful career as a certified athletic trainer. You're in good shape. She is currently the uh, head athletic trainer at her uh, local high school in uh, Milford. She also is an, has an active role in managing a number of business properties owned by her family. Uh, thank you for joining us today, uh, you know, Nicole, and uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, about your thoughts on this particular session. Thank you. Thank you, Lou, for having us. Uh, it's an honor to be here today. And I'm sorry, again, that Eleni couldn't make it. Um, she could barely sit upright today, so she didn't think she'd be able to get on. Um, it's been an honor to be part of this uh, WIA organization with Lou and, and Stefan for all these years, six years now. Um, being in the um, House of Representatives, I was honored to be in there with my sister Themis for four years for two terms. She was the minority leader uh, for six years. So we were able to embark on this journey together to bring our Greek roots 
um, to the legislature and, and to bring it abroad to Greece and to do anything we can possible to help with relations with Greece. And of course, with um, Eleni joined us in 2021. So that, that was a great addition. We call us, we, you know, there were the Greek delegation in Hartford. But uh, while in Hartford, we also, as Lou had mentioned, we passed a resolution for the Greek Armenian genocide. So that was very important to us. And we also brought our feelings to um, our feelings of strong opposition for the for the fighter jets to President Biden and the federal delegation. Eleni and I were able to talk and meet with Senator Chris Murphy uh, before he went to Greece last summer to let him know how we are our concerns with Turkey and and the issues that we have. But it's um, it's an honor to be to be here today and working with Lou and working with Stefan for all things Greece and America. But thank you gentlemen for having me here today. Can, can I ask you a question? Um, sure can. Uh, many people, many people don't realize, and, and that's part of the discussion we're going to have also in terms of what, what the state legislators do with regards to those issues that you just discussed. Uh, even though there's, um, you know, Congress votes on certain things, there is a discussion, obviously, by the state legislators with regards to with their senators on these issues and their Congress people uh, on these particular issues. Can you just describe, if you can, and um, you know, briefly, in terms of, of what's actually done behind the scenes in some cases? Because many many people here in, in the states don't realize what effect the grassroots uh, state legislators actually have on some of the policies, both nationally and internationally. Well, it, exactly. I mean, our jobs as as Connecticut legislators is. And, and just as residents, we have to talk to our federal delegation and tell them that just like our people do on the local level, what we agree and don't agree and disagree with. So it was really important for Lenny, my sister Themis and I to get in touch with Senator Murphy to let him know he's representing us and in turn, you know, representing the, the concerns of Greece and his Greek Americans for him to then, you know, advocate on our behalf to let us to let them know how much we oppose this and what it will do and how it will affect Greece and what Turkey has done and is proposing to do to Greece. Thank you so much for that, because I think it's very important. And some people don't don't realize how important all of you are to what takes place nationally and internationally. I'd like that now to introduce Senator Spiros Manzavinos, uh, who represents the seventh Senate district, which encompasses uh, various um, parts, parts of Delaware. Uh, he was raised in New Jersey. He, he earned a bachelor's degree in economics and political science from um, Mohlberg uh, College in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and a master's degree in political science from the University of Delaware. Uh, he got his first taste in government service as a legislative assistant and research analyst with the Delaware Senate in the 1990s. He later gained firsthand experience with economic development issues as a vice president of the Newcastle County Chamber of Commerce. Subsequently, he worked as a media relations professional for some of Delaware's largest employers before launching his own communications consulting firm, the Manzavinos Group. In addition to running his own small business, he has taught courses as an adjunct instructor in, in Willington uh, University. He previously served as a member of the Parish Council at Holy uh, Trinity Greek Orthodox Church in Wilmington, an, an organizer of the annual Holy Trinity Greek Festival, and volunteered as a, as a church youth group advisor. He also previously served on the board of the Claymont uh, Community Center as the treasurer of the Delaware Press Association, and as president of the Delaware Chamber um, of the Public Relations Society of America, in addition to being a Sunday school teacher. He currently serves as chair of the Senate Banking, Business, Insurance, and Technology uh, Committee. He's the vice chair of the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee and a member of the uh, Senate Elections and Governmental Affairs, Environment, Energy, and Transportation, and Labor Committees. He also holds a seat on the uh, Joint Capital Improvements Committee. He lives in uh, Westgate Farms neighborhood with his wife, uh, Megan, and the daughter, Sophia and Catherine. Thank you so much, Spiro, for being with us today. Well, thank you. And I appreciate the opportunity to be here and talk about, you know, what I, what I kind of think is, you know, an underrepresented group, you know, when you start talking about 
local government and the impact that it has uh, uh, in our country. Um, you know, sort of building on what Lou and, and Nicole said, I think, uh, you know, we do have an opportunity to, to, to raise the profile uh, of these issues, you know, through resolutions, um, through, um, you know, working with our congressional delegation um, and all that. And in a state like Delaware, where we're small, um, we do have that opportunity. To, uh, you know, I run into my, I can run into my congressional members of my congressional delegation at the supermarket, um, or I can run into the governor at the at, at, a, at a football game. So I mean, those sort of things, uh, you know, are a little different in say some of the larger states. But I think what you know, having this role gives us the opportunity, you know, to 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 share uh, our experiences. Um, and many members of uh, legislatures do move up in in into into congressional level uh, or federal office. So having this pipeline of Hellenic American legislators, I think is a, a, a real important, uh, really important. And if they themselves aren't the ones that are, that are looking to climb the ladder, then you also have the, their colleagues that they serve with who may. So you may be sitting next to, you know, a, a colleague of mine may eventually be uh, a, a con member of Congress or, or run for the United States Senate, but they would have heard me talking about these issues, you know, again, through a resolution uh, every March or, um, again, Delaware being small, we only have one church, we only have one festival. So, uh, which, which garners some, some pretty, uh, a lot of attention every year. So these are very important things. Likewise, one other point, I think, you know, a lot, a lot of states now are engaging with, uh, have trade offices. Um, I know the state of Delaware has trade offices, uh, in Taiwan and Germany and a number of other places. So when we start looking at the impact that state legislators have, uh, to help shape a, an agenda, we, you know, we could start to look at, you know, through each state's trade office to start to talk about, you know, how we can uh, foster these relationships with Greece and the Eastern, Medi in the Eastern Mediterranean and, and what impact that has. So there's definitely a lot of ways uh, that we can be of value and, and again, advancing, uh, you know, this, uh, um, this, our viewpoints when it comes to Greece and, and, and serving uh, Hellenism. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much for that. Uh, our next uh, state representative is uh, Leonidas Leon Stavrinakis. Leon was born in Charleston. Leon was was born in Charleston and earned his bachelor's degree from the College of Charleston. And a Leon, his, yeah, I'm, sorry? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. There's some back, there's some background noise. I apologize, uh, uh, Leon. Uh, Leon, let me let me start again. Leon was born in Charleston and earned his bachelor's degree from the College of Charleston, and, and he is a graduate of the University of South Carolina School of Law. He has served in the uh, General Assembly since 2007. Prior to that, he served as chairman of Charles of the Charleston uh, County Council and as a local prosecutor. He was first elected to the uh, uh, legislature with the support of Republicans, Democrats, and Independents. Leon has earned a reputation as being a bipartisan problem solver and a fiscally responsible leader. He has repeatedly voted against tax hikes, demanded efficiency and eliminating waste. He repeatedly cut income, property and sales taxes while still making critical investments in our roads, neighborhoods and schools. Leon and his wife live in West uh, Ashley. Uh, they have three children, uh, Clara, and uh, Emmanuel and Emma. He has been voted Legislator of the Year by the Charleston Met Metropolitan Chamber of Commerce and the Port of Charleston Maritime Association of South Cal Cal uh, Carolina, while also maintaining a 95% lifetime pro-environment voting record and receiving repeated endorsements by his uh, conservation voters of South Carolina. Elected chairman of the Charleston County, uh, County uh, Council by a part, bipartisan group of his colleagues, Leon oversaw the budget that elevated Charleston County's credit rating to AAA. He helped pass the state's first uh, countywide smart growth management plan, the urban growth boundary, and the state's first county green space preservation plan. Uh, Leon's experience includes helping to secure the funding for the I-526, and the uh, Ravenel Bridge. Uh, thank you and uh, for being with us today, Leon, and welcome on board to this uh, panel discussion. Hey, sorry about that noise. It's <laughs> the okay. other it's in the it's background. Okay. Um, it's okay. 
good good to be with everyone good to see uh my friends and um and to be part of uh this group i always want to thank lou and stefan and the others who helped uh familiarize me with with the uh whia and the incredible opportunity to uh to be a part of that organization um of course, I would echo a lot of what you've already heard about the importance of the work that we can do as state legislators um, on on uh, contacts with our congressional delegations um, regarding, uh, you know, kind of the large geopolitical issues that affect Greece. I would also point out that the reason one of the reasons that's so important is because the interests of uh, of Greece and the United States on the issues of national security are so closely aligned. A strong um, and safe and secure uh, Greece is a strong, safe and secure United States of America. And there's really no separating those two things. Our interests are, are and always have been um, so closely aligned. And what's uh, always been uh, it's always been in the in the national security interests of the United States of America to promote the safety and security of the Greek people and the Greek nation. And sometimes, uh, you know, it's quite simply just our job to remind folks of how important that is um, at the national level. One thing that uh, that was touched on earlier that has been some, an area of focus for me is that in addition to those common binds, on the issue of national security. My state, South Carolina, uh, is a, historically a very, very strong tourism and, and uh, port trade state. And obviously that creates uh, a additional common bonds uh, with Greece. And uh, I've brought uh, with, with Lou and the organizations help a number of, uh, of members from South Carolina to Greece to try to further develop uh, those bonds and uh, and develop, uh, you know, uh, relationships on those and other uh, grounds to continue to foster uh, a close relationship there. There's a lot of trade opportunities, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, tourism opportunities uh, that I think the two, our st my state and Greece uh, share in trying to develop those. Uh, is good for South Carolina and also good for Greece. And that's me me doing my job um, to make sure uh, that those interests are represented and that the uh, opportunities are maximized for businesses and 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 the citizens of South Carolina to expand, um, you know, in the areas of trade and tourism around the globe. South Carolina has the, the deepest uh, port on the East Coast um, and is one of the top tourism destinations globally. Um, and again, we all know uh, that Greece is a strong uh, shipping and trade nation and also has a major, major tourism uh, economy globally. So those those connections are important to me and my state. So it's also been an opportunity for me to do a better job locally representing the people of South Carolina. And I appreciate that opportunity. Um, and again, thank the folks on this uh Zoom that have helped open those opportunities up for me to better serve the people of South Carolina. So that's a little bit about, about how I view uh, our, our work as uh, Greek American uh, state legislators and look forward to any questions and hearing uh, from my great friend, Stefan. Stefan, I think you, you, uh, you staying warm out there in, uh, in Wyoming. Uh, it's it's uh, almost 80 degrees here in Charleston, not to make you feel bad. Thank you. Thank you, Leon. Um, and for those who do not understand, we talked about shared values, for example, and uh, certainly um, the Civil War actually started in your state, you know, with the uh, Fort Sumter and all the rest of that. But many people don't realize uh, uh, we, we talk about issues of America and, the, uh, and Greece, but many people don't realize the effect, for example, and I, I like the fact that you happen to be on the Charleston Maritime Association of South Carolina, because many people don't, don't realize the effect that the Hellenic cotton merchants had in the Civil War itself. Uh, the Hellenic cotton merchants came into the U.S. Uh, approximately in the, uh, in the 18, 1830s, late 1830s, and they had established offices 
in New York, in, uh, and also in Charleston, and also in, in, in Louisiana. And they actually, at some point, controlled the cotton trade, the cotton trade in, in the U.S. And when, um, when uh, the cotton, let's say, uh, cotton was king, when they said cotton was king, and they decided to, to, uh, to sort of play games with, the, uh, with Great Britain, for them to, to also join the, perhaps the civil war on the side, on the, side of, uh, of the South, the Hellenic cotton merchants, who were very large during that period, very large, they actually find, found an old alternate source of cotton, which was from Egypt. And on that basis, and there's research being done on that right now, and we had a panel discussion actually here at the Eastern Mediterranean uh, Business Cultural Alliance on that, they actually helped affect the, the civil war of the United States. In addition to that, uh, people should know that uh, the Hellenic Republic uh, and what took place in the revolution of 1821 had an effect on the American abolitionist movement. And uh, we also at EMCA had a panel discussion on that with uh, various uh, African-American professors as well as Hellenic professors and how the slavery of the Hellenic people uh, during the 400 year occupation of the Ottoman Empire within Greece and the, and the rhetoric that took place during what they called the Greek fire of that period here in the United States did have an effect after the Hellenic Revolution on the, uh, on the start of the American abolitionist movement in the state. So thank you, Leon, for that, for reminding me of the, of the uh, Hellenic cotton merchants uh, who really had an impact on, uh, on United States history. With that, I'd like to uh, introduce um, uh, Senator Stefan Pappas. Uh, he was the founder and the retired president, uh, uh, past president of Pappas and Pappas Architects, lo located in Cheyenne, uh, Wyoming, and brought to the firm over 40 years of experience in medical, educational, military, and commercial architecture. He received a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from the University of New Mexico and a Bachelor of Architecture degree from Arizona State University. He served in the United States Air Force for nearly 24 years, spending most of his military career in an Air Force rapidly deployable prime base engineer emergency force unit. He retired as an assistant adjunct general and commander of the Wyoming Air National Guard in the rank of brigadier general. His, uh, his highest military award was the uh, Legion of Merit. Not only has Stefan served his country, but throughout his career, he has been a passionate, uh, he has been passionate about service to his profession and community. His service includes, and I'm just gonna read some of them because there's so many of them, <coughs> his um, involvement in the World Hellenic Interparliamentary Association governing board member, and, and he's the current treasurer, the Wyoming State Board of Architects and Landscape Architects, the Wyoming American Institute of Architects, and we can continue. Advisory boards, architectural advisory boards, various um, chapters, and he's the president of the Wyoming chapter of the Air Force Association. Uh, he's the president of the Frontier chapter of the Society of the American Military Engineers, and we can go on. Currently, Stefan is in his third, fourth year term as a senator in the Wyoming State Legislature representing Senate District Number 7 in, in the Cheyenne, uh, Wyoming area, area. He has served in the following, following committees. And again, it's huge. Uh, Senate Labor, Health and Social Services. Senate Transportation, Highways and Military Affairs. Senate Corporations, Elections and Political Subdivisions. Senate Education. Uh, Select Committee on School Facilities. And we can go on. Stefan has been married since uh, 1974 to Kay Lynn Pappas, formerly Kay. Venetis, Kay and Stefan have three grown uh, children, uh, married children, and three grand uh, grandchildren. Stefan, welcome and thank you for being with us today. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, it's great to be here and great to be with my friends. Uh, and to Leon, no, it's not that warm here in Wyoming. <laughs> in fact, we just got above freezing today, so we're we're doing we're actually having a, a warm spell here. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, yeah, I'm glad to, uh, to, to join you uh, and to discuss uh, the issues uh, are around uh, uh, US and uh, um, uh, Greek relations. Uh, when I was first introduced to uh, 
the World Hellenic Interparliamentary Association. Um, I had no clue about this association prior to prior to being in office um, in, in the Wyoming legislature. And uh, when I was asked to join uh, the group, uh, it, um, it, it, it rekindled uh, a fire within me that my papu put in me. Okay, my papu, uh, both my uh, uh, papu this and yaya this, they, they put in me the, this heart I have for Greece. Uh, and so uh, I've grown up uh, um, that way. And then when I uh, was exposed to uh, the uh, WIA, uh, I, I was able now to find an avenue where I can actually express my uh, Greek roots here in the U.S. Uh, so out here in Wyoming, we don't have very many Greeks, okay? If, if we have 100 families, we're probably lucky. Uh, not too many Greeks ever made it out here. My, my grandparents came out here. Uh, one was in the restaurant business, uh, came out to Colorado and wanted to start his own restaurant. And they said, well, go up to Wyoming. They need people, uh, they need to start restaurants. So he headed to Wyoming and started a restaurant back in 1928. And then my other grandfather came out here with the railroad, got to the US, joined the railroad, and they sent him to the middle of the country and he, uh, and he uh, worked for the Union Pacific Railroad. So that's how, that's how we got here. A um, lot, uh, lot of Greeks also were in the coal mines and the, uh, uh, the other mining operations here in Wyoming as well. But very few uh, Greeks remain, very few people remain. Uh, the entire state has just over half a million people. So uh, we're pretty sparse out here. The issues uh, uh, that I deal with uh, when it comes to Greek uh, uh, American relations, um, you know, deal with uh, trade and commerce. We work on education, we work on tourism, and we work on um, military. And, and uh, well, that's what WIA does. We, we work on, on all of these relationships. Um, but for me, being a retired military man, a retired Air Force general, uh, the military portion of that uh, tends to pique my interest the most. And, um, uh, and it's actually, in my mind, very key. As you know, uh, Eastern Mediterranean tends to be a, a hot spot. And, uh, and the security of the Eastern Mediterranean is very, very important to not only US interests, but uh, NATO interests, interests around the world, certainly interests, uh, Greek interests as well. Uh, and so, uh, making sure we have a strong partner in the Eastern Mediterranean um, is, is essential. And as we all know, um, Greece's neighbor, uh, the Turkish government has been, um, you know, a little bit unreliable lately. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we certainly um, uh, have worked through we uh, to um, uh, make sure that, that um, that some of the actions that, that Turkey has taken um, um, don't go unnoticed, okay? Uh, Turkey, um, and, and I don't know where Turkey is gonna go, you know, they've got an election coming up here, uh, which will be hugely important, okay? In fact, uh, they were gonna have it in June, and now uh, I see that everyone's moved it up to May, uh, likely May 14th, which is, the hun uh, which is, uh, Fairly significant because it's a, it's it'll be a, the hundredth anniversary of the republic at that time, and and um, and it's also uh, uh, actually another anniversary in 1950. You know they um, that was um, was the end of their uh, one party rule, and so in 1950 uh, uh, in May um, the um, uh, competitive election system began in Turkey. Um, however, things um, in that democracy, quote, democracy, uh, have, uh, have, you know, not really played out well. You know, they have not been a, a very um, uh, uh, good partner uh, to, uh, to the folks in NATO. You know, NATO tends to be in a tizzy all the time. You know, 
certainly there are uh, the issues over the Sweden and Finland now, uh, wanting concessions out of those countries before they let them into NATO. Uh, the, the issue where they, they purchased the S-400 missile defense system from Russia. Um, and they're right now trying to play the middleman between Russia and Ukraine. Um, the, the, everything, everything points to um, what Erdogan wants for himself and not what's best for the region. So, um, in fact, you can see, you know, in December, uh, um, the Turkish courts uh, uh, sentenced uh, that Istanbul mayor to almost three years in prison, okay? Because he is gonna be a political opponent. Um, so I, I don't know where this election is gonna go. Um, I know that, uh, that um, a, lot of, a lot of issues have, have, uh, uh, don't look well. I mean, he, he's frozen the Turkish people's democratic uh, bank accounts, you know, uh, the, the party's bank accounts. And, and so um, democracy or quote democracy is uh, uh, not doing well in Turkey. That does not bode well for relations with the West. And so when it comes to the military side, uh, I'm pleased to see that, that we ratified the uh, mutual defense cooperation agreement with the United States and Greece. Um, that was a very key, important uh, document um, that had, had, um, uh, had been in place, but was re-ratified and brought, to, brought up to snuff. And of course, there's also the Defense and, and Interparliamentary uh, Partnership Act. And so... When I work on issues in Greece dealing with the military and, and, and we as members of, uh, of the uh, uh, WIA board work very closely with uh, Minister uh, uh, Paniotopoulos um, uh, and uh, General Floros uh, in the military uh, on issues that, that can help the Greek military advance uh, their strength and their position in the Eastern Mediterranean. It's a, the key partnerships we have, the trilateral agreements between uh, uh, Greece, Cyprus, and Egypt, and Greece, Cyprus, and, and uh, uh, Israel are key. Uh, and, and you can see that uh, they've been working uh, and having military exercises amongst those uh, three key partners in the Eastern Mediterranean. The, the, the Turkish government, you know, all the frequent incursions into Greek airspace, um, the issues with their drones, uh, there's all sorts of uh, zimies that they are doing. And so it, I do have a, a, a fair amount of connections uh, uh, on the Hill and also within the military uh, uh, where folks have, uh, have uh, our ear and so, my mission is to make sure that uh, uh, we can provide better relationships uh, between Greece and, and the United States on the military uh, front, because I tell you what, folks in Congress understand that uh, Greece is a key ally and a key uh, uh, partner in, in uh the uh, security of the Eastern Mediterranean. So whatever I can do as a Greek American, um, uh, I'm going to do in that, in that respect. So uh, I probably overspoke in my time. No, here. no, no, you, you, Stephen, you didn't, you didn't overspeak. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, you brought up some uh, very critical points uh, in terms of uh, the Eastern Mediterranean uh, this year, of course, is the 100th anniversary of the, um, of the uh, uh, Turkish Republic. And May, May 14th, May 14th uh, is a very important date, not only for obviously the, uh, the start of the Turkish Republic, but also it's an important day uh, for the Pontian Genocide. Uh, May 14th is uh, designated as the Pontian Genocide. It has to do when uh, Kemal Mustafa landed in Samsung and where he started actually uh, a terror campaign killing millions of people, not only Hellenic people, obviously, but, but all Christians in the area uh, that included, as you mentioned before, some people mentioned the Armenians and, and others. 
As a matter of fact, one of the concerns that we had relating to the Eastern Mediterranean was that because of the political issues and the election taking place, that some of the rhetoric that was, um, that was coming out of uh, Erdogan, in fact, had to do with uh, having maps and things of that nature that showed that the Hellenic islands uh, near Turkey were in fact uh, Turkish islands. And many feared, many feared actually that uh, what he was talking about was actually going to take place for political reasons. And maybe there would be an invasion actually of Greece. You mentioned the thousands of incursions, not only in the airspace of the Hellenic Republic, but also the sea lanes. And but for perhaps what took place in the Ukraine, and everyone is watching right now, everyone in the world, meaning Ru Russia and uh, China are watching right now, uh, to, to see what is taking place uh, in, in uh, and in particular Erdogan, because if in fact, if in fact uh, the Ukraine falls, then it sends messages to Erdogan and it sends messages to China with regards, with regards to Taiwan. This is where the state legislators again become very important in these issues to explain to people that, that certain things that take place in different parts of the world affect other parts of the world. And as you indicated very eloquently, the, the issue of the Eastern Mediterranean as being American interest, what takes place, not, not, we're not here to defend their loss because we're Americans, obviously, but we do believe, as we indicated before, in the rule of law, we do believe in, uh, in uh, making sure that American interests are upheld. And certainly, uh, if something happens in the Eastern Mediterranean, like happened in Cyprus almost 50 years ago, if it happens on the islands, et cetera, has a direct effect on America itself. And uh, and it's and it's positioning within within the world. So thank you, thank you for that. It was very important, Lou. I'd like if we can. It's an open discussion right now. Anyone could speak, but Lou, uh, I'd, I'd like to thank you for uh, for helping bring us together today, because you and I, uh, when we went actually to the Vasilopira cutting in New York, uh, where the professional organizations were cutting the Vasilopita, and that includes EMCA, of course, as one of the uh, professional organizations based in New York, we discussed the, this very issue, Lou, of the misunderstanding, not only, not only by some of us in the United States of America and the importance of state legislators to America and to Americans, but also the misconception that some people may have in the Hellenic Republic and other places as to what state legis legislators actually do. Many people claim, many people claim to represent within those governments, meaning Cyprus, Greece, et cetera, they claim they represent the Hellenic American uh, body, let's say, within the United States. But it's not true, is it, Lou? Well, the difference, Lou, is uh, with, with all of us, we're elected. And that makes a yes. big difference. Our group of 43 members of Congress, the, the general officers and the state legislature, we're elected. So we have the direct communication with the constituency that is the same constituency as the U.S. Senator or the member of Congress. And I wanna say that very important because we probably have an easier path to argue and educate our colleagues in government and Congress who are gonna make those final decisions. And I think uh, uh, my colleague from Delaware, uh, Senator Spiros Monsavitos, was with Senator, U.S. Senator Chris Coons, I think a couple of weeks ago at a security conference. They sat on the same panel. My colleague uh, from South Carolina, He's always in contact with uh, Senator Lindsey Graham and Senator Tim Scott. And matter of fact, the number four person of the U.S. Congress prior to the uh, change in the House of Representatives was uh, uh, Congressman uh, Jim Clyburn, who Lou has, Leon has a very good connection. Stephen Pappas forgot to tell, tell you that when um, Deputy, when Minister Postolakis came to the United States as the former Joint Chief of Staff, the first time he came to the United States and went to the Hill, S Stephen introduced them to uh, Senator Barrasso, who was the chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee. And they didn't sit there for 15 minutes. They spent an hour together understanding the issues. And that's what's important. But the other issue I want to also bring to the table, Lou, is that we work together with, with our, our agencies, our state agencies. So we have, for instance, the governor of a South Aegean from Rhodes, which is all the Vodakanisa, all of the all Kikladis coming to Rhode Island in March. He's gonna be meeting with 
our commerce secretary, he's going to be meeting with the biggest tour operator, one of the biggest tour operators in New England. And also we're discussing getting a trade mission with Connecticut, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and New Hampshire of the governors, maybe in December. But we linked it also, not just about Greece, but Israel. The uh, president of the Israeli Chamber of Commerce was has a good relationship with the Greek Council General Boston because of us, the state legislators. So we're combining all that. But lastly, before I, well, before I return it back to you, we also work as state legislators amongst ourselves on the local issues. We, we call each other up. What are you doing in South Carolina as far as law and order issues? What are you doing in Connecticut as far as taxation, energy, in Wyoming, health? It goes, we have this great communication network that helps each other with our local constituency. Like Stefan said, it's probably one Greek Orthodox church in the state of Wyoming. Rhode Island, we have 8,000 Greek Americans, three churches, but it's not also the Greek issue, but it's the American issue. And we work hard to what better our constituency in our home states, but what the bridge is, being Greek American elected legislators. And that is very cute, very important. And lastly, the U.S. interest, why we blocked the F-35s, Turkey had the, has the S-400s. That is a danger to U.S. interest. Our concern right now is giving Turkey the F-16s, the advanced uh, block uh, 80, I think, F-16s. Their technology is very advanced. Turkey still has the S-400s. Give back the S-400s, maybe we'll talk about the F-16s. And I'm surprised, uh, Lou, I just read uh, on the wire just now that the foreign minister of Turkey, Kisuvoglu, uh, is proposing, I think today, a six-point proposal to Greece with aim to improve the bilateral relations following the earthquake. And he says in a statement, my friend, Foreign Minister Dendias, it wasn't your friend about a couple of weeks ago. You've been uh, attacking Greece. You're going to come in the middle of the night. You've drawn that false line between Turkey and Libya, claiming half the eastern Aegean, uh, eastern Mediterranean. So these, all these issues are very important that we, again, we send that strong message to our constituents. Many Rhode Islanders, if you say, what about Turkey and Erdogan? They think negative about Turkey and Erdogan, but they think great about Greece, tourism, visiting Greece. So I think that's all wrapping it all up. I think that's how important we are as state legislators. And hopefully the message resonates back to Greece. We are going to Cyprus for four days in uh, in April to visit and meet with the new president and the new government of Cyprus. Again, strengthen those ties between the United States and Cyprus. Thank, thank you, Lou. Yeah. I, I think, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, please. please. Well, Lou, I just wanted to weigh in on, on, on the point that you had mentioned about, about Turkish, uh, you know, expanding into the Greek islands. You know, that's their, it's their blue homeland. Uh, uh, for, for those uh, watchers out there who may not know, but blue homelands become a common phrase in, in Turkish political life. I mean, it's, and it's odd with, with the claims made by Greece and the Republic of Cyprus. You know, both governments have argued that, that, that Ankara ignores uh, Greek, Greek, uh, Greek and Cypriot sovereignty. And, and, uh, and they certainly have, uh, uh, have uh, uh, failed to live up to the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. Of course, they have never signed on to that treaty. They've never ratified it. So uh, uh, they they maintain that that uh, you know it's, it all has to be with the it all it all uh, stems around uh, the natural gas that was found in the in, in the uh, uh, in the waters uh, around Cyprus and and in the Mediterranean. So, uh, but I think that that. A lot of people may think that that uh, blue homeland uh, um, coining of that term represents uh, just political showmanship because of it's an election year. But, but to a large extent, I think it's actually a dramatic shift um, in Turkish political and military circles. Because I remember reading an article, I forgot, it was a former rear admiral of the uh, uh, Turkish government. Um, uh, he's a very popular person, um, and he has done more to to uh, uh, further the presence and the and the idea of the blue homeland than than ever anybody thought. You know, it's become a contemporary phrase 
in in uh, in um, Turkey, and 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 while I I originally thought it was, you know, just kind of grandstanding, and but but you know, it appears to be a really uh, more aggressive and antagonistic thought. Uh, process that's happening in Turkey these days. So, uh, you know, I, 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 I fear that kind of thinking. Stefan, I, I have to, I have to say, because it's very important, because we tend to listen to what people say, but not listen to them. In other words, uh, you know, when you have Russia that's saying they're going to do this and that, no one's listening to them, but there's plans out there, just like Erdogan had plans, like you said, the blue homeland, catching on, et cetera. And what we noticed, what we noticed in particular with the air flights and the things that we talked about, everyone is testing, whether they have a balloon coming through the United States, testing to see what we're going to do, or they, or in the case of the Turkish military, where, where they started initially just having planes enter into the space to see back and forth what anyone is going to do. And the more you do not do the more they test you and they go deeper and deeper and deeper. We see that happening, for example, as we mentioned before with China and Taiwan, as they start edging in doing all these different types of things. So we have to listen. We have to listen a little bit more to what people are saying and not take it as being some grandstanding or as you said before, you know, uh, this, you know, uh, election oriented. So these things, these things become very important. The other thing, because there's part of the audience that's in Greece right now listening also to our conversation, because you know we're in different parts of uh, the U.S. and also also within Greece. What what I think people don't understand is our system of government in the United States. You know, in Greece or other nations, it's a top-down type of uh, uh, governments and societies. They don't realize that in America, it's grassroots, bottom-up type of societies politically. So for any of you who are out there, if you'd like to just address that, the bottom up and the strength of the bottom up, if any of you would like to just comment on that, if you'd like. And by the way, this is an open discussion, so anybody can say anything they want. I'll, I'll, I'll jump in on that. I think you know it is really important because um, as Lou put it, pointed out before, I mean, we share a constituency and uh, not realizing that the state of Delaware has almost twice as many people as the state of Wyoming. Uh, we. <laughs> which is something I learned today. Uh, but I mean, I think, you know, it, it gives an opportunity for, for relationships. I mean, it's all about relationships and, and politics and, and elected government, uh, you know, is, is founded on that. So, you know, for, for example, I'm going to talk about, you know, um, Senator Chris Coons. I mean, Senator Chris Coons, who sits on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, started off as a, as a, as a county executive um, here in Delaware. Um, so, and, and, and ultimately moved up. So, I mean, you know these these relationships and and these abilities for people who to to get into positions of um, very important positions in the federal government can start. You know, I don't want to use the word humbly, but from 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 the grassroots, from 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 local government. Um, you know, so I, I think it's really important. You know, where where we as as legislators sort of serve as that that bridge, uh, representing some of the constituents having. Uh, a, a specialized knowledge in certain areas, have an opportunity to educate, again, not only those who are elected, but those who may soon be elected uh, into those larger roles. And, uh, you know, that's where I think our value really starts to come in from, from the grassroots level. Lou, just to add that, my U.S. Senator Jack Reed was a state senator, became a member of Congress. Now he's the chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee. And I know Nicole's uh, not on video right now, but Chris Murphy was a state senator, and and they served together. Her sister Themis served uh, new uh, uh, U.S. Senator Chris Murphy when he was a state senator in Connecticut. So it all intertwines. That's very important that you brought up. It's from the bottom up, and that's why you, as we're united under our heritage and under also under the WHIA, the World Hellenic Interparliamentary Association, plays a key role. We have twenty legislators in Australia. We have eight in Canada, and then we have scattered all over the world in about uh, 20 countries. But our colleague in Australia, he's a, currently the federal MP, Steve Yorganas, who's on the board. His best friend right now is the new prime minister of Australia, Albany. So it all intertwines. And I think people got to understand, especially back in Greece, it is a grassroots. And that is the key, how you resolve a lot of issues and send and educate a strong message. 
on what we've just been discussing. Uh, this well, the, the, the other thing, Lou, that uh, people don't understand is that uh, is that you're American representatives, right? Okay, so therefore, therefore, what what they don't understand sometimes is they think because you have to happen to have Hellenic descent, obviously, you know, your your relatives came here or whatever, that in fact you're only going to operate on the interests of the United States of America. So. When we talk about the interests of the United States of America, all these issues that we talk about are not being, you know, Greek or what have you, but it has to do with the importance to America as a nation. And in other words, we talk about democratic countries, as we said before, the rule of law. These are the type of things that, that we believe in. Obviously, if the Hellenic Republic was a different type of organization or a different type of, uh, let's say, polity, a, a dictatorship or what have you, our thought processes would be a little bit different. But, but that's important for everyone to understand. Everyone here who's elected by the American public represents their particular district, their particular state. And it's important to understand that what you do has nothing to do with per se, getting directions from anyone from a foreign nation. But in fact, we are Americans doing the right thing, the American thing. And, and the fact that our values, our values have happened to be similar because we have in this country, as we know, Hellenes, people who are a descent of Hellenic people, but also there's many Phil Hellenes here. And we have to muster all that, all that, all that, that energy that we can together to do the right thing in our particular case for America. I'd like to ask a question about the, about the Hellenic Congressional Caucus, if, if we can. There are many, obviously, people who belong to the Congressional Caucus from different states I'm not sure if many of them know that they're they're uh, part of the Hellenic Caucus. Uh, can can any of you basically just discuss the the linkage with uh, some of the members from your state uh, who are in Congress or what have you that happen to be part of the uh, the Hellenic Congressional Caucus? Anyway, uh, yeah, Lou, uh, that very important because our 43 elected uh, government officials. I think that's probably the 100% Hellenic Caucus. But again, the I think it's about 143 members of Congress that belong to that Hellenic Caucus, and that's going to be built up. And the way we build it up is telling our congressmen in Rhode Island or Connecticut, join it. David Cicilline is the, uh, I believe, the new chair. He's a congressman from Rhode Island. He's probably ranked number eight, uh, was ranked number eight under Pelosi as far as the leadership. And he right now, I believe, is a chairman of the Hellenic uh, Jewish Hellenic Caucus, which I think plays a very vital role, bonding Israel and Greece even closer together. And I believe uh, uh, Seth Magazine, who just got elected, our former general treasurer, very close to the Greek community, he's going to join the Hellenic Caucus. So Rhode Island only has two U uh, congressmen, but two U.S. senators, but both of them, all four members are 100 percent as far as supporting the, the caucus and the issues of concern between the United States, Greece, and Cyprus. I got, I got to tell you, the two chairs, as you know, of the, the used to be the two chairs of the Hellenic Caucus. One of them, of course, was Maloney, uh, who lost recently. I was a supporter of Maloney for a number of years, actually. I, I, I had personally a few fundraisers for her and Malyatakis and some of the other um, uh, people of Hellenic descent or non-Hellenic descent who, who, who supported what I consider to be American values, not, not necessarily Hellenic values, but American values and support of the East Mediterranean. How can, how can we help each one of you on your local level, uh, in particular as it relates to, uh, to issues of fundraising, et cetera? Uh, obviously, uh, obviously, in order to win, you can't depend on just uh, you know, different uh, Hellenic-oriented uh, you know, organizations in the United States, but how, how can we support you uh, all of you in any fundraising activities? Well, Lou, I think the most important issue here is I talked years ago that we should have had a lot of the retirees form a some sort of uh, organization, whether it was Michael Dukakis, uh, Paul Sarbanes, uh, John, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, Paul Sarbanes, uh, also uh, others that were formerly in Congress to create some kind of entity, a national entity that can support us during the election campaign and to get new members, new Greek Americans all over the United States to join politics is getting to be very difficult. 
Uh, as we know, money is the mother's milk of uh, winning a campaign. So I think that unifying past elected uh, Greek Americans uh, that are still with us today and being the spokesperson, because I think they really understand where we come from and have some sort of organization. And there's been there's been some in the past, but they've come and gone. But I think basically, whether it's somebody that lives in New York that can support uh, somebody like Leon Stravanakis in South Carolina or Delaware, Wyoming, I think unifying that pool, I think, is very important, number one. And then getting a lot of the uh, business interest involved and see what we're doing in, in our home states to promote business. I think that also ties in, not about the Hellenic issues, but what is uh, Nicole Claridis doing in Connecticut as a Republican uh, promoting and fighting for small business and even lo in large businesses? And I think it's getting a businessman, a Greek-American businessman, somebody in, in Chicago, Illinois. So I think there's very uh, affluent people or out in California, but unifying them. So when it comes time to the, uh, the election cycle, we would accept and uh, have that opportunity to meet with business individuals, talk to them what we're doing in our home states, and then they can turn around and support us as the interest, what we're doing locally, but also our Hellenic roots. Yeah, and I mean, Lee, Lee, yeah, please, go ahead. Please. Well, and then to, to Lou's point, I think that becomes even broader and more important when we go up to the federal level. You know, on the, on the local level, on the state level, that, it, yes, it's important, but to get our, our federal delegation elected, that's when we really need the organizations to come out and, and support nationally. No, I think I think you're absolutely right. And I think uh, when Leon, Leon also touched on, and, and you did, Lou, and, and, and so have you, in terms of the commerce, trade, and tourism issues, okay, that are involved, okay, the economic issues. Uh, 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 scenario not only not only the military and let's say let's say some of the the other things that are happening in the, in the East Mediterranean because commerce is very important trade is very important tourism is very important on both sides on both sides of the Atlantic I think I think all those are are extremely extremely important things uh, anyone yeah, jump in with any with any issue you guys want to talk about yeah can I just I just want to like jump on that that point a little yeah bit. please and what uh, Nicole said I think are really important but I also want to add that you know, people, I think folks need to really understand and get back involved and engaged with issues uh, uh, around uh, the Eastern Mediterranean and Greece. I mean, I think, you know, obviously you look back, what, you know, almost five decades ago with the invasion of Cyprus, you know, everything that was generated around that and the activism that was generated. You don't see, I, you know, I, I'm not that old, but I mean, I, I could, you could look at, I think, sort of the decline of the engagement level of, of Americans of Greek descent on national issues, you know, beyond, you know, I, I will go back to um, yeah, one, of Del one of one of the more famous Delawareans uh, who happens to be in the White House right now, started off as, as a United States Senator in Delaware and was educated by the Greek American community around the issues of Cyprus. All those folks who, who, who worked with then Senator Joe Biden have long since passed away. You know, and there are very few folks in the next, you know, look, I'm in my mid 50s. There are very few folks who are in their 20s and 30s who are really starting to step up to be able to discuss what you just said, how do you articulate our values and why it's important, um, you know, in, in the Eastern Mediterranean. So trying to reinforce the need for that next generation to become involved because, you know, folks who, again, were active during the invasion of Cyprus, they're, they're, they've gotten older, they've, many have passed away. What's the next, you know, what's that next generation? And how do you then leverage, you know, that activism into what Nic Nicole and Lou just said about supporting not only anyone of, of Hellenic descent who's running for office, but also demonstrating that, that uh, Americans of Greek descent are a political force and can have an agenda on these issues with those who are non-Greek in federal office. So I think that's another point that really needs to start to come out because, hey, if, we're not doing it, who's gonna do it? And the, the number of folks who are acting now, I think are, are, are shrinking dramatically. It, it, uh, uh, yeah, good. As far as uh, we have this World Hellenic Interparliamentary Association, uh, the United States finally took over the presidency in 2021 after about maybe, uh, I believe nine, 10 years. And uh, I, I, I ran for president, it was a, a good opportunity, but we bonded. 
And the reason why you see all these articles, 25 Hellenic American legislators supporting Menendez, another 21 writing to their members of Congress to block the F-35s and the F-16s, this is a good time that we finally have unified a good, almost all Greek Americans that are in office on the state level and on the federal level and, and general officers, which I think we got to, we need you again, your support and everybody's support to continue and expand our goals. Cause I think this last year and this year and coming up the following year, we're going to be, uh, it's going to be very, very crucial that we uh, bond together and continue growing. Well, I mean, uh, Stefan just told you a few minutes ago that he didn't know anything about WHIA till we found out that there was a Pappas that just got elected in Wyoming. So again, going across to the United States, sometimes very difficult. We just found out that the Lieutenant Governor of Nevada three weeks ago is a Cypriot American. Both his parents were born in Cyprus. And he is, uh, he's looking to run for higher office. So I think grassroots is important, but identifying and being unified, I think is very, very important. And they'll tell you, my colleagues in government will tell you, I'm on the phone almost every day with them texting them. Hey, listen, jump on this, get together, let's sign this letter. So it really takes a, a strong leadership with the board and uh, committing, uh, again, understanding the issues of concern, which is very, very important in order to get the results for the United States, for Americans. And that's what you said at the beginning. They're our constituency. They vote for us. So we work very hard. And it gets a little difficult sometimes because we have to, we not only have our local issues, but then we have our, uh, our heritage issues that we have to work very, very hard. And Congress gets it. I mean, I think Congress in many, many years, you see they are adamantly blocking, uh, took Turkey right out of the F-35 program. In order for Turkey to receive an F-35 jet fighter, the, Congress has to vote on it. Menendez just approved, I believe the other day, is approving the purchase of Greece getting the F-35s. So there's a lot of work involved. And I'm glad, I think this was a very uh, uh, eye-awakening program that you had us together. Hopefully, we can do this again and have other- oh, no, I, I, think, I think every few months, maybe, you know, every four or six months, we should get together with, with other representatives also. But yes. I, think the point, I think the point that Spiro made <clears throat> is extremely important, okay? And what he basically said was in the past, when it was unifying issues, when you got out people in particular, when it happened, like he said, in five decades ago with regards to Cyprus and all the rest of that, I think it's it's important for us to re-energize, re-energize the community in issues that are important to us, not only as of Hellenic descent, but as Americans. In other words, these issues of what's taking place in the East Mediterranean uh, and other parts of the world, by the way, and also the issues that are taking place in the United States are very important. And one thing that, that I think, um, I got to be honest, Lou, and to, and, to, and to the representatives that are here, I, I think within the Hellenic Republic, they are confused, confused as to where the power lies within the Hellenic American community. They, they uh, believe that certain people are uh, representing the Hellenic American community, not understanding that, in fact, you, you are the legislators in the grassroots level that have more power than it can imagine in terms of supporting what's taking place as long as obviously they're in the American interests, okay, which obviously they are in, in this particular case. I think, I think they don't comprehend, okay, sure, we have a Menendez, of course, but Menendez will be gone at some point, like every, everyone else's. So you have to build this grassroots power base that existed before, that's gotten weak, and I agree with Spiro, by the way, it's gotten weak. And some people have stepped forward and make like they represent the Hellenic Americans or what have you, but, but you're the Americans that count. You're the Americans that count. People who are elected officials, who have input with other elected officials, and who actually determine what, what takes place within not only local issues, but also national and international issues. And part of the reason, Lou, why I wanted to do this was to start the conversation locally, because that's where the strength is locally uh, about these type of issues of, of national and international importance. Lou, I think well, you, you brought on a great idea and something that we have to talk about in the future. 
I think we should also meet in Washington, D.C. I think yes. all of us, the state legislators in 19 states, we should have like a, a one day conference or two day conference where we talk about the issues and then go to Capitol Hill and meet with our elected officials and bring the constituents that are going to be attending that conference, the non-elected, with us to yes. introduce them to the U.S. senators and U.S. congressmen. Because I, I don't want to say that we have a green, we have an open door, but we're all elected by the same Mr. John Smith or Mrs. Mary Green in our states. And, and that's what builds this grassroots pyramid uh, issue that you're right. A lot of people don't understand that. And that's what no, how we no they don't they don't understand it. They don't understand it. And I think I think Stefan also touched on the issue that that yeah, he was voted he, he wasn't he wasn't voted into into this you know the state legislator because he happened to be of Hellenic descent. Obviously, right. when you got a hundred families, you know, he's obviously important to the people of his state and of that's his right. district. Okay, that's what's very important. And and the only thing that people listen to, by the way, are the people who vote. OK, the people who vote, obviously, as as a voting block, you know, we're not we're not a majority in, in any particular way. But we do have influence from the point of view of linkages with other groups and other and other elements of our American society. And I think you're absolutely correct that we have to start taking an initiative to link up with others. I mean, as you know, I'm, I'm very linked with the African-American community because, you know, these are our friends, et cetera. And I'm being honored by them, actually, by the uh, by the um, Harlem Chamber of Commerce on the 125th anniversary yeah. uh, on Saturday. So I think our strength comes from 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 being Americans and, and thinking the right the right way in terms of Hellenic ideals, meaning American ideals, whether it was democracy, whether it was rule of law and all these other things that we cherish as Americans, as Americans. And Lou, we're bipartisan too. We're equal Republicans and Democrats I, out of the No, I love and, that. I, I love and we're that. unified. No, no, I love the fact that we're sitting here in a bipartisan way, Democrats and Republicans, Americans. Okay, this is this is by the way, what's great about this is tomorrow obviously is uh, President's Day, and really the birthday of, of George Washington. But many people don't read his speech that he made in 1796, okay, when when um, when he was leaving. That had to do with his with his uh, farewell address, let's say, uh, to Americans. Okay, and and his farewell address had to do with certain things that they should watch out for. And one of the things that they should watch out for is not get into this bipartisan antagonism that exists. Right. That yes, we may disagree on certain issues, but we can compromise and we can go forward. It's very important. Any questions from from you guys or, or to each other? Any any. Any thoughts? Nicole, I will say I was in your state. I will, I will say I was in the state uh, on, uh, in Stores, Connecticut. As you know, they have the, uh, they're going to be dedicating the, Spart the Spartan Museum. I, yes. I don't know if you, okay. So, um, so I was there myself when, when, the, uh, when the culture minister of Greece came down. And I, and I hope to come back when they have the... Uh, the opening or whatever you want to call it. I think, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's a great thing to do, uh, not only for obviously, uh, you, know, uh, you know, Hellenic culture or what have you, but, but also part of uh, Connecticut culture, uh, you know, Connecticut uh, history and all the rest of that. I think it's extremely important. Tell, us a, little bit about, yeah. Tell us a little bit about your community and, uh, you know, the Hellenic community within, within Connecticut. Well, I, I mean, we, my, community, I represent three towns here in Connecticut, and we don't really have many Greeks. Years ago, um, a, ta a town 10 minutes over in Ansona used to be a really big hub for a lot of Greeks here in Connecticut. Um, but we do, I mean, we have one, two, three, three or four Greek churches in Connecticut. So we have, you know, we have a, or five, five, right, Lou? I think five. Yeah. Um, we have a good Greek population in Connecticut. And in, as you may know, in Norwalk, we have one of the biggest um, Greek populations um, in the country. And we were there in 2021, right, Lou, for their yes. big dedication. We, we dedicated, uh, Lou, uh, what Nicole uh, is ex extending on is the Pontian genocide. Just think in Connecticut, Nova, Connecticut, working with uh, Nicole and with Eleni, and they passed and voted on the Pontian genocide for the first time resolution in Connecticut. The mayor of Connecticut, 
has dedicated a public park, first time ever done in the United States, a memorial remembering the Pontian genocide, the 385,000 Greek Pontians that were slaughtered by the Turks between 19, uh, 1919 and 1922. That is first time because of what Nicole and uh, Eleni de Grois. Now we have a third state representative, uh, Poulos, Representative Poulos had just got elected and he got elected by one vote. He won his election after the recount by one vote. So we have three in Connecticut. I just want to add that. And But it's very important that uh, they share these values with their constituents. And, and the city of Norwalk uh, was very happy to dedicate this very important uh, memorial to show what took place on the other side of the world. But a strong Pontian Norwalk community, their restaurant owners, doctors, lawyers, uh, commercial entities, uh, in trade and health. So it bonds also the communities, the American community with our roots. And that's, I think, very important. Uh, thank you, Lou. I, we're gonna have some final thoughts now, if we can. Uh, Nicole, some final thoughts on our, our panel discussion or anything you'd like to talk about? Oh, I just wanna thank it. <clears throat> excuse me, thank everybody for, for coming today. And I think it's important to continue this conversation and, and expand on it and do what we can you know, to, to, to bridge that gap and help, you know, America, Greek Americans and do whatever we can um, to help Greece and, 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 and move us forward. <clears throat> I'm sorry, <coughs> choking, but uh, I, I hope we get to do this again and continue the conversation. Thank you. Spiro, some uh, final thoughts uh, for the, the day? You know, thank you. I want you know, again, I appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here. I think, um, you know, as, as Lou talked about, I think helping people understand what role we as state legislators have, uh, not only uh, in what we do in our day jobs, uh, and obviously, again, we, uh, you know, again, to, to, to work um, to advance American interests in the, Ameri in the uh, Eastern Mediterranean. So, I mean, the more opportunities that I think people can see that uh, elected officials that are not in Congress can have, um, I think uh, it would just allow us to kind of build out into our base and, and, and grow stronger and, and, grow, uh, and grow in our numbers. So appreciate the opportunity. Sp Spiro, thank you for being with us. And, and in particular mentioning what you mentioned about how we were stronger in the past and perhaps we should reawaken ourselves uh, going forward. Uh, Leon, Leon, some, some, uh, some final thoughts for, for today? Leon, are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. Sorry about okay. that. Um, no, no problem. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I uh, appreciate everyone's input. I think it's uh, it's really important uh, that that uh, people uh, understand uh, a point that you've emphasized uh, many times. This isn't um, so much about uh, anything other than what's best for the United States of America. And it's, uh, it's good for us as people of, uh, of Hellenic descent, that there are so many shared values, uh, throughout the histories of, of, of both countries. And that so much of what was, uh, founded in Greece has been adopted in America. And it's our job to represent the interests of the United States of America and, and it's a great thing for us as Greek Americans that uh, a strong and healthy Greece uh, is in the interests of the United States of America, in our national security interests, in our American interests. And so to the degree that we continue to promote a uh, healthy relationship between the two, um, it's, it's, uh, it's something that's great for America. And um, and it's good good feeling in our hearts that it's also good for Greece, um, and we'll continue to work towards that. Um, you know, we have talked about uh, how you know um, a lot of these decisions ultimately uh, that that uh, that we talk about are things that happen in Washington, but that as local legislators we have a unique. Uh, kind of finger on the pulse of our local communities and can help shape opinion and uh, input into those decisions. And we should do that where we can. 
but also we have uh, great relationships that we've cultivated over years of service. Lou was mentioned in some of this, you know, Senator Tim Scott and I served eight years on county council together, then in the legislature together. Uh, Senator Lindsey Graham was in the legislature uh, in South Carolina. Uh, you know, Congress, our new Congresswoman from Charleston was a House member with me uh, in South Carolina. So those relationships uh, are critical and key, um, but it's important that we utilize them, right? And if we're not utilizing them, uh, then, then they're not doing much good. Um, but, you know, I appreciate the opportunity to be a part of, of the organization and to, and to be a part of this today. And we'll all continue to, to keep working together. Lou, uh, I agree that we should, uh, we should uh, take our message to Washington and, and, and remind folks about the collective uh, influence that we, we bring to the table as, as state representatives and um, and I think that's important, and that and that we should do it. Uh, I, I think it's important that we meet in Greece, but it's also would be important uh, to spread that message around, and to continue to to bring those voices uh, that 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 we represent to Washington, just like just like we do when we take them to Greece. Thank you, thank you, Leon, for that. And there's no doubt in my mind that uh, the state legislators have have the pulse of America, quite frankly, that, that would be important to bring to Washington. Uh, Stephens, uh, Stephen, some final thoughts on uh, the discussion? Okay, thank you, Lou. I, I want to ditto everything all my colleagues have said. Uh, I, do, uh, I do appreciate this forum and hopefully uh, we'll continue doing it uh, per periodically. Uh, I certainly would um, uh, encourage any of your any of the listeners that uh, that that log in and, and listen to us that if they have any ideas um, uh, or any thoughts, I, I'm certainly open to uh, a dialogue with anybody regarding Greek American relations or any any uh, on any avenue. Of course, I as you saw, I. I, I, I really delve into, uh, into the military heavily uh, and the security uh, aspects of uh, uh, the Greek American relationship, but, but there's many, many others. Uh, you know, we've been helping American companies try to find uh, um, ways to invest in Greece. So we're, we're, we're big into looking at that. So if somebody needs help doing that, you know, get a hold of us the other way around. There's many companies that uh, Greek companies that want to get a full foothold here in the United States and expand their business. Let us help you do that. Um, we certainly, in fact, I was just on the phone yesterday with uh, someone that most of my colleagues uh, know. If you guys, uh, Kalia Lee uh, Wertheimer, she's uh, looking to work with uh, Saco Shipping uh, to bring uh, Mastika products to the United States from Helios. And so, um, uh, so we're working on, on a, lot of, a lot of avenues. Uh, and, and so what I ask is, is for people to get a hold of us if they have ideas, if they have issues, uh, all they have to do is, uh, you know, for me, they can get a hold of me, they just go on the Wyoming State Legislature and, and go to that website and they find my cell number, my, my email, you're welcome to contact me, uh, but um, we, as the World Hellenic Arab Parliamentary Association, want to further uh, the ideals of Hellenism around the world. And certainly with the uh, members, uh, our members here in the United States, uh, we want to enhance those American Greek relationships. Um, but, but we can't do that if you don't ask, right? So we, we ask people to, Contact us. Let us know what your thoughts are. Uh, give us ideas. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there's lots of good ideas out there that American Hellenes have have that that we could benefit from. So um, I just appreciate everybody taking the time doing this today. I thank you for inviting me, uh, and I'm humbled to be part of this uh, this uh, 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 online uh, program of yours. Stephen, thank you so much. And we're humbled by having you all, all with us today. We, we have done actually about three or four um, uh, panel discussions based on doing business in Greece. So 
one of the one of the things that relate to doing business in Greece has has to do with um, bureaucracies, legal systems, and all the rest of that. So I think for those who are watching the program, uh, there can be recommendations again again to the state legislators and others about what what Greece should be doing in terms of of changing perhaps some of their regulations and laws, et cetera to make it easier for people to invest in Greece. Now, I've done panel discussions where, I, where I've, I've literally had uh, three of the, um, of, the, uh, of the few, very few uh, American billionaires of Hellenic descent. And uh, all three of them probably, and I don't want to name the names, all three of them probably the wealthiest Hellenic Americans here in the, in the States. When I had a discussion with them off, off the record, they all said that they had problems in doing business in Greece because of certain regulations, certain, certain aspects. So I think the dialogue is great, by the way, not only obviously on the, on the military side and on the, on the geopolitics of the Eastern Mediterranean, but on the commerce side. I think, I think you're absolutely correct that we have to expand the issue of the commerce side because that affects obviously the local states as well as as uh, Greece and Cyprus. That, that, that's an excellent point, Stefan, and I'm, I'm so glad you brought it up. Lou, well, I, gonna... I, 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 yeah. let, me, let me add on to that. I too agree, you know, as the treasurer uh, of the organization, I deal with the Greek banking system. Uh, and, and let me tell you, I've had my issues with them, and, but we regularly have issues with, in, other, in other arenas. But again, as, as legislators, in, in the World Hellenic Interparliamentary Association, we do have access to many of the ministers, the Minister of Tourism, the uh, Minister of Foreign Relations, uh, Minister of Defense, almost every minister, we uh, are on one-on-one -on -one basis with them. And we have routinely talked about issues with tourism and issues with infrastructure and issues with uh, the financial systems. And so, um, we, we do talk about them. Uh, if there are specifics, again, I ask people, get a hold of us. We'll push those issues when we're back in Greece. Stefan, Stefan, thank you so much. Th thank you so much. And Lou, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end with you because obviously you and I have gotten together. We had this discussion and decided, decided to do this. Uh, but one of, the, one of the things that I think is very important to note is although your group is meeting with ministers and all the rest of that, as was mentioned by, by Stefan. The reality is some other people, they fly, you know, they fly into Greece, making like they represent the Hellenic American uh, uh, politics, if you will. And uh, they start meeting with prime ministers, et cetera. And, and, and obviously the ministers report to the prime minister. So, so that's gotta change, Lou, that's gotta change. Okay, because what you guys are doing, the grassroots represent America, American interests, and certainly being of Hellenic American descent, you know, you, you, you're there to do the positive thing, not only for, for the Hellenic Republic in Cyprus, and also other countries in the Eastern Mediterranean, but in particular for America. Lou, would you like to just conclude sure. with your thoughts? Sure. Yeah. Uh, Lou, again, thank you very much for having us uh, this afternoon on a Sunday afternoon uh, holiday weekend. I think it was very, very important to people understand it's a very important holiday weekend, President's Day. But mostly important is coming from our states, and I said earlier, we have a lot of these Fortune 500 companies that are investing in Greece as we speak, whether it's Pfizer, Oracle, Microsoft, Hard Rock with the new uh, casino gaming facility in uh, Elinicon, uh, Onyx, the list goes on and on. And just think of nine nonstop flights a day from Illinois, Massachusetts, New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, even the District of Columbia, nine nonstop flights. It might even increase to 11. U.S. commercial airlines who we wrote to to encourage uh, Delta to continue service throughout the year, which they are other than a small uh, weekly uh, eight week break. But that all works together. And again, us being next to the governor, like I said earlier, we have the governor of Rhodes, Haji Marcos, which is Southeast Aegean, visiting uh, Florida, Tampa, and also Rhode Island and New York on the week of March 16th through the 24th. And it'd be a great uh, opportunity for you to meet him. And they're looking for business opportunities, but at the same time, they understand that it's a two-way bridge. And that's very, very important. It's gotta be, it's a two-way street. And also I've been receiving a lot of emails regarding a lot of issues. 
and, and I said most of the issues are pertaining to embassy issues. And we've got a, uh, Ambassador George Tunis right now in Athens. So we, he's a, again a Greek American. So we have that easy communication avenue. But most important is, is the uh, unity, unifying our group, number one, working with all our state governments, which is very, very important. And when a company comes to locate in, in Rhode Island, if it's an overseas company, whether it's from Ireland or Italy or whatever, they come to state government first and we encourage them and help them whether there's an issue with the taxation, property tax relief, uh, whatever it is. I mean, we're the ones that are in the trenches and understand, again, the issues, the state issues, but it expands to the global issues. And that's why we're, we wear two hats, one for our local uh, districts, our local constituency, and one for our heritage. And I think bonding both those together is of value for the American people and also for Greece, Cyprus, and also Israel, because we do have that USA, Greece, Israel, USA, Cyprus, Israel, uh, work in progress, as we should say, bonding those uh, other nations together. So I think it works out best for everyone that we're unified and we, st we send a focused, strong message to, to everyone out there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lou, for uh, uh, helping us get together. Thank you to everyone who was on the panel. This was a fantastic panel. Uh, we do want to repeat it every few months to have this, to have this particular dialogue because I think it's very important. I think what was mentioned also, uh, the importance, the importance, grassroots importance of you, uh, our, uh, our government officials within the various states and, and your importance and how you not only relate to your particular politics locally, but also how you affect national and international uh, policies of the United States of America in the best interest for all Americans, in the best interest for all Americans. So thank you for that. Uh, in, in March 5th, we're going to have um, our next panel discussion, which has to do with the legacy of uh, former King Constantine II of Greece, who recently uh, passed away. And then uh, on March the 12th, we're going to have an event that relates to the Hellenic uh, orphans that were brought into the United States, sometimes legally and illegally, during the 1950s and 1960s. And Lou uh, and everyone here, uh, I didn't mention this, but I think you can be of tremendous help uh, within uh, your influence uh, relating to those particular orphans that were brought here to the U.S., who are trying to find uh, you know, their roots within, within the country and to be recognized uh, you know, as to who they are uh, within uh, not only America, but within Greece itself. Thank you to the audience for being with us. Thank you again. It was a fantastic, fantastic panel. Thank you all.